Hi everyone, my name is Jane and this is Loopy Mabel's Closet. Now in today's video I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I was just thinking the other day, you know, I sit behind this camera and I share with you all my dressmaking projects and what have you, but you don't really know that much about me and I feel as if in this lovely sewing community I'm starting to make some lovely sewing friends and I thought I'd just share with you over a cup of coffee who I am and how I've got here today. Welcome back. So I just thought in today's vlog, I'd just share with you who I am, how I've got to be where I am. So I just thought perfect opportunity to maybe do a little vlog. So hopefully it's not going to be too boring. So anyway, here goes. So yeah, I'm 54 and I've been married to John um, for 35 years. In fact, it's our wedding anniversary tomorrow and John is um, 74. So there's 20 years age difference between us. And I met John when I first started in the civil service, HM Customs and Excise, back then when I was 18 years old and he was one of the managers and it just went from there. I remember quite clearly back then that we were a little bit of the centre of gossip in the office because obviously John had been married before and obviously I was only 18 at the time and John was 38 at the time and it was like, oh, you know, gossip total gossip we were the talk of the office I still remember to this day the the main boss the chief of the office uh, called me and John up to his his big boardroom office oh I remember I still remember it clearly I was so young and so so innocent back then and he said right what what's going on you know is what's your what's the intentions what you know what what you're both planning on doing type of thing um, he said, because I've had, I've listened to lots of gossip in the office and I'm not having it. If you're both happy and it's what you want to do, I'm going to stop it right now. So I just want to ask you, you know, so we both said, yeah, no, we would, this is what we want. We're, we're getting to know each other, blah, blah, blah. So he called, I cannot believe, I can still cringe now. He called a meeting, the boss, Mr. Gallagher. All of all the staff were called into the big boardroom, so we all everybody crammed in, and me and John were sat at the head of the table. Oh. And he basically told everybody, all the members of staff, if he hears any more gossip about me and John, there will be trouble. So get on with your work. I want no chat about Jane and John. Oh God, I was absolutely mortified. I still remember it clearly to this day. So anyway, that was that. So. Um, that was fine and then obviously I had to tell my mum and dad and luckily, I say luckily, my dad worked on the oil rigs at the time so he was still away offshore and I told my mum and I said oh I've got a new, I've got a new boy, boyfriend type of thing and she said oh how lovely you're going to bring him around to me I said well he's a bit older than me and when she, when she found out he was 20 years older than me she was like mortified she said oh my god he's old enough to be your father she said what will your dad say I said oh I know she said well Bring him round. I'll meet him, and, um, and then obviously if he's if he's okay and he's, he's you know he, his intentions are good, then I'll try and soften your dad. So, so John said, yeah, of course I'll come come and meet your mum. So I got to bring John home to meet my mum. Uh, my mum sent me out. Literally, she did. She sent me out to walk the dog. I had to go and walk our Pepper, while my mum had a chat with John just to see basically what his intentions were because I suppose a 20 year age difference I suppose she must have been thinking what's 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 his ulterior motive type of thing so she was quite happy afterwards she thought he was thought it was lovely and you know really charming and lovely personality so she said right I'll try and soften soften your dad before he comes home so when he rang um she said oh Jane's got a new boyfriend when she wants you to meet him he does said oh yeah okay and she said, oh, he's a little bit older, but I'll tell you when you come home. So I was absolutely dreading it. So when my dad came off the oil rigs and he found out John was 20 years older than me, he hit the roof. He basically said, you've got two options, Jane. He's old enough to be your father. I'm not having it. You've got two options. You either tell him to do one, take a run and jump, or I'm going to wash my hands of you. So for my dad to say that, it was like 
are really bad because I was the apple, I still am, the apple of his eye, daddy's girl. So for him to say that, it was like, oh God. So anyway, my dad said, I'm going back on, when I go back on the oil rigs, make your decision. And when I come back in two weeks time, hopefully you made the right decision. So my dad went back on the oil rigs and I just said to mum, well, no, I'm not, I'm not, do I really like John. He really likes me type of thing. So I just stuck with it. And anyway, to cut a long short story short, it, my dad got to know John over time and really liked him and give him, give him. And then John asked for permission to marry me. And my dad said, yeah. And the rest, as you say, is history. So yeah, that was a bit of a tricky situation. To, I was only 18. Anyway, I got married at 19. And then we had the boys. So I've got identical twin boys who are 32 now. And we've got a daughter who is 30. And then obviously I worked in the civil service for 24 years in total. And at the end, my last part of my career, I was um, a customs officer in the uniform. And I worked at the airports, I worked at the docks, I worked on, you know, inland. We did all the, obviously, drug smuggling, cigarette smuggling, because that was re really bad at the time. Uh, so I was involved in all of that. It was really high powered, quite uh, fast paced, it's very stressful, confrontational job. But I absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. It was right up my street. Just loved, I just loved the argy bargy, all the confrontation, you know, from passengers getting off the aeroplanes and what have you and things like that. I loved it. But saying that though, I don't like confrontation in normal life. But when I was at work, it didn't bother me at all. Absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. And I was also an officer safety training officer. So I did all the training for applying handcuffs and for uh, defence training if you came into like a confrontational uh, violent situation how to deal with all that so I did all that so it was like a totally different world to hear, to hear today but unfortunately back in 2004 uh, just a few months before John's retirement he did 40 years um, he had a stroke so uh, and obviously he luckily he got um, early retirement and uh, his stroke didn't affect him, his mobility. It was more um, the brain. So his uh, function was obviously less and uh, he couldn't do the things he used to be able to do. He wasn't then allowed to drive the car and just, you know, just general things like that. So, but anyway, so I was then, because I worked obviously in the civil service, a brilliant employer. Uh, they offered me a compassionate redundancy package so I could leave to then look after John. So I had to give up my job and stay at home and look after John. And um, so that's what I've been doing since 2004-ish, so 15 years. So we carried on as best we could and um, we lived in a lovely big five bedroom Victorian house which was filled with different levels of stairs, stairs going up, stairs going around the landing, stairs up into the, the loft conversion, stairs down into the kitchen, stairs in the garden. It was just literally a death trap for John because he had quite a lot of falls, his mobility was, wasn't as good and he had a number of falls and one fall he had, one particular fall, he fell almost from the top of the stairs to the bottom, almost, and he was um, literally, he tore all his uh, is it your ligaments in your legs and everything and he couldn't walk for 10 weeks that was awful and when the health professionals came and the physios came they said and assessed him uh, they said listen you know you really need to consider moving house maybe to a bungalow because he's just going to get worse it's obviously as it's because when you had a when you have a stroke apparently it's degenerative over time so they were saying, you know, over time it could get worse and blah, blah, blah. So we made a decision to leave our, my house of my dreams, my lovely Victorian house. Um, oh, it was gorgeous. I loved it. We, we, we spent 15 years there and we did it all out. We put the cast iron fireplaces back in both rooms, the front room and the back room. It had all the original mouldings, all the cornices, all the great big massive skirting boards. The ceilings were like eight foot high. 
we put a fabulous solid oak kitchen in and marble work top and flagstone flooring and oh it was just amazing it was five bedrooms so um obviously the kids had all moved out by then so so there's me and john had one bedroom and all the cats had a bedroom each we used to laugh because they had their own bedroom basically you'd go and look for where the, where the cats were and they'd all be one in that bedroom one in that bedroom and it was hilarious really so yes yeah, so we just made a decision right well we're going to have to move it's only a house at the end of day and john's health and safety is more important so then we downsized about five years ago now to where we are now a bungalow two bedroom bungalow and I didn't think I would like it, didn't think I would settle, but oh, I absolutely love it. And it's just perfect size. Uh, obviously, the cats don't have their own bedroom anymore, but they have a bed in every corner of the house, you look. In fact, I think there's one, I think Primrose is down here at the moment. Um, and yeah, I mean, John still has his falls, but at least when he falls, he's got no stairs to worry about. And um, it's, you know, it's everything's level. So we moved here, like I say, about five years ago and just loved it. And this second bedroom, I have over time converted it into my sewing, comb, crochet, hobby room type of thing. And uh, gradually, gradually, I've got back into my sewing, then my crochet and started crochet designing. And it's just, bit, it's just snowballed from there, really, over the last, say, five years. And then I really got more confident in my crochet because obviously I'm, I've got like two, two sides to me. I've got my sewing and I've got my crochet. And on the crochet side, I just got thought, right, I've got loads of designs, loads of patterns. I'm sure I can create and, you know, publish into patterns. So once I got the confidence to publish the first one and that was like really popular, I've just continued on ever since. And then I got obviously my YouTube channel, my crochet, got the confidence to sit behind the camera and that's just grown and grown and grown. And obviously I absolutely, that's a passion of mine, my crochet designing. And then my sewing, well, eventually I got my sewing, I came back into my dressmaking about 18 months ago now. And it was just that I was sick of wearing clothes that everybody else wears that you have, you know, you buy in off the, off the, off the peg type of thing. And I just wanted to like wear something that was different, but like it was my, my style type of thing. And I think it was also this around about the same time as when I hit 50. And I was thinking, oh, I'm sick of wearing what everybody else wears. I want to wear something that, I want to wear something that shows my character, my style. And um, I just thought, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. People think I don't like what you're wearing or what you're wearing or type of thing. I thought, well, if I like it, I'm going to wear it. So it sort of basically stemmed from then, really. I used to do a lot of dressmaking when the kids were younger. I used to make gorgeous pinafores and dungarees for the kids. But obviously, as they got older, they wouldn't be seen seen dead in wearing any of handmade clothes. So then I, and then obviously busy at work, busy job. So that got put on like the back burner. And um, so really, since, yeah, since we moved here, actually, that's when all my hobbies and my love for crafting has really come into its own. I am very lucky that I don't have to go out to work anymore. Um, it would be a whole different kettle of fish if I had to go to work because John would be a, on his own all day long. We'd probably need to pay for a carer to come in and look after him. And I'd probably be even stressed, stressed, I'm stressed and probably feeling guilty having to go to work and leaving John on his own all day. And then obviously having to come back in after a busy day at work and then pick up the pieces and you know, just do, it would have been it would be it would have been a nightmare so i'm really lucky that i don't have to go to work and um and i really do appreciate every day that you know i can come in this room in between caring for john and i can just go off into my little dream world my crochet design and all my dressmaking and it's just like absolute bliss it all seems seems to have come into into place for me and it's just everything is just sitting neatly in my life. It just fits in with caring for John because I do care for John 24 seven. He doesn't go out much, he can't go far. His, his legs won't carry him very far anymore and he gets really tired. And also now to top it all off, sorry, this is sounding really doomy gloomy, uh, but to top it all off last year, last Christmas, John was diagnosed with bowel cancer. So that, hit us really hard I thought where well, how is this 
you know, he's already had a stroke, so now to top it all off, he's now been diagnosed with bowel cancer or colon cancer. So we were thinking, right, okay, it's not the end of the world. You, you, apparently we Googled it, as you do, everybody Googles, don't they? And we Googled it and it said, you know, you, it's a really good um, operation procedure-wise to get it removed if you catch it early enough and, you know, people recover really well. So we're thinking, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll tackle it type of thing. But then he got assessed by the surgeons and the medical team and they said there's no way he's fit enough to go through surgery and if he did, did did manage to go through the surgery and come out still alive his quality of life would be really poor and they said they weren't prepared to put him through that so basically we're just living with it day after day really and it's like a year down the line now and we don't think we don't like it doesn't well I mean it's not very nice it's awful uh, I try not to, uh, we try not to chew over it and we do talk about it, um, but we don't let it get us down because what's the point? And uh, we just deal with it every day. So some days he has not too bad days, other days he's really tired and he gets up, has his breakfast and then he has to go and lie back down or he's in quite a lot of pain. So obviously all what I do is around John. So when he is lying down and he doesn't need me, then I come in here and do either crochet or sewing or just blog i love to blog um so yeah so it's my my little piece of my little haven i suppose um because it is quite stressful looking after john and you know all the demands that it comes with it but it doesn't let us get us down and you know there's people worse off than we are and we've still got each other so you know it's not the end of the world and um, I always say things happen for a reason. My life is, my life, well, and John's, is completely different to 15 years ago. I mean, how different can you be? High powered, fast paced, stressful, confrontational job on the front line to sewing and crochet here in front of you on YouTube. I mean, how different can that be? So you just do not know what's going to happen and what's going to come around the corner so I just think every day you make the best of it and I'm always a glass half full type of girl anyway and I always think of the positives and if the bad things have happened then just learn from it move on and just keep going there's no point in bearing a grudge or just you know um, chewing it over because what's the point so yeah so that's basically how I am able to sit behind this camera and do my sewing and do my crochet um, and you know lots of people wonder god how do you manage to do your sewing and your, and your crochet and fit, fit it all in well it, because luckily i don't have to go to work so i can get up on a morning and I can plan what is needed for the day and then fit it in between that and then i do quite a lot of stuff on an evening as well if i don't know john's watching something on the tv and i'm not really interested i'll probably pop in here and maybe do so it just fits it just fits in lovely so the 20 years age difference between me and john has never been an issue for us because obviously i met him and he was always being 20 years older than me so i've known no different um but it's been funny over the years when the kids were growing up um we used to go to parents evening and the you know the teacher would say oh hi you must be mum and oh you brought granddad we used to say no you haven't brought granddad this is dad and the teacher used to like be go bright red and be mortified really embarrassed and um, the kids just thought it was hilarious and we had all that had that all the time and then lately um, when you know the nurse comes to see John or we go to a hospital appointment or whatever or they say hi John how are you and they say oh you brought your daughter <laughs> it always makes me laugh you know I'm his wife this is this is this is Jim, my wife and they just go like, oh, I'm so, like, you know, more, again, embarrassed. And um, we just said, don't worry about it. We're used to it. No problem. And you can see how embarrassed they are. Uh, yeah, so it still, it still makes us laugh to this day. So, but like I say, it's, it, I don't know any, we don't know any different. So I suppose we probably still get looks off people, but it's like water of a duck's back to us. So obviously, so the age has been absolutely no, nothing really to us. But now, as just even if John hadn't had a stroke or what have you, he's obviously older now. He's 74, so he is going to slow down anyway. 
so and I'm 54 so and I'm not ready to slow down so you can sort of see the the age different age difference now is how it's you know how it's panning out you just take each day as it comes don't you and uh, and I just know how lucky we both are actually because we are lucky we've got three beautiful children and grandchildren and my mum and dad are healthy and fit who live two doors two doors down there and you know so that's that's the main thing so yeah so obviously the only downside of being at home every day which is not a downside uh, to me because I love being at home every day I in my element I've always been a home bird anyway and I'm quite happy pottering around all day every day I don't go far don't go over the doorstep very far if I do um, John has to put his little alarm watch on in case he falls and what have you and so I don't go far but the only downside is it can be quite isolating because obviously I don't see anybody obviously see my mum and dad and the kids and what have you uh, and I have no friends I have I do not have a single friend to my name doesn't that, that sounds really Billy no mates doesn't it uh, but I don't have a single friend They've all petered out over time because obviously we've been not been at work anymore. Your circles change, don't they, of where you, you, you go. And yeah, so I have no friends whatsoever. So that's another good thing that I've also enjoyed about my YouTubing and my vlogging and Instagram uh, and the sewing community that I've got really involved with in the last year. I've made some amazing sewing friends and I just feel part of something. So although I don't have any physical friends, I do have uh, lots of friends in the, you know, in the circle of, you know, the social media circle and chat to quite a few quite regularly. There's a lovely Sharon from Shabby Polka Dots. There's Debbie from Debbie Crafty Makes. There's, there's the lovely Lynn. There's, well, there's two Lynns, the Lynn Old Soul and Lynn Lions Made With Love. And, of, and there's also the lovely Rosie, Rosie from Rosie Sews Modern Vintage. And we just hit it off straight away. We started chatting uh, and uh, messaging and we just hit it off. And then we did the Swaps Share Saw Challenge. And we've just been in touch ever since and I've only ever spoken to her once and all the rest of the times we just, you know, chat through Messenger and what have you. But we just really hit it off. We both love vintage. She's a proper, loves the vintage, 40s, 50s vintage. And she always makes me laugh and we just love sewing and, it, and she has her different lifestyle. I have my different lifestyle and it's so lovely to learn about her and I tell her little bits about me. And that's another reason why I thought I would do this vlog, you know, because she was saying, oh, your life sounds really interesting, what you used to do. We'd love to hear more. So I thought, oh, well. Why not pop it in a vlog type of thing? Obviously, why am I Loopy Mabel? Well, obviously, there's two parts of me. My two YouTube channels, obviously, got my crochet. Um, I'm wearing the Florence. This is one of my designs, Florence Cape today. And obviously, I've got my dressmaking. So the crochet was the Loopy, obviously, the loops in the yarn. And Mabel is Mabel, my mannequin. So I've got my Loopy and my Mabel, Loopy Mabel. And obviously Mabel, I named Mabel after my nana, and my lovely nana, Mabel. So I've got my sewing and I've got my crochet and they just seem to go together. So yeah, so that's why I'm called Loopy Mabel. So although it is isolating being at home every day, it's I have this lovely uh, platform to chat to other people that would never get the chance to chat chat with in in everyday life so it's just amazing those of you who are following me on my slimming world uh, progress i've got two pound to go for my three stone award i'm absolutely totally chuffed in myself i set this goal i started with slimming world a year ago and um, i set myself the goal of a year and literally got two pound to go so i am so thrilled and I've just it's given me a, a new lease of life it's given me body confidence I love wearing clothes again it I mean it's all a personal thing isn't it how much how much you wear or what you look like or what you feel and it was just bringing me down I didn't like being three stone heavier and I didn't like seeing my reflection when I used to walk past a shop window you know the you know those things if you can like relate to that and I just thought, right, I've got, I've really got to try, really try, and yeah, I'm so, I'm so pleased. It's all about, I suppose, um, how much you want to achieve something. And I knew I wanted to lose, lose weight, but I wanted to lose weight for me, for nobody else. 
and um, so I've just done it quietly. I could have given up August, month of August, just gone. I had four weeks, I had maintain, I maintained, I put half a pound on and I maintained for the month of August. And I could have given up, I could have thought, oh, that's it. I think I'd lost a stone and a half by then and I could have just given up right there and then. But I didn't, I just got, got weighed, went every week, got weighed, maintained, fair enough. Carried on, next week, got weighed, maintained. Fair enough. Third week, got on the scales, half on. I was like, half on? Fair enough. Next week, maintain. I was like, gutted, but I thought, I'm not, I am, I'm not giving up. I'll just, it'll take as long as it takes me. I'm doing it for me. I'm not in a race. And here we are. So if anybody else is out there and you're toying with, you, you're not happy with your weight or how you look or how you feel and you're toying with doing something and you really, really want to do it, I'm telling you, you can do it. You can do it. You just put, just just do it for yourself. Don't do it for anybody else. Do it for yourself. And do you know what? I'm getting more ballsier as I get older. <laughs> Definitely. I'm like, as I say, I'm 54 and I've got this attitude now that I am unique. There's nobody else like me and you're the same. We're all unique. You can wear what you want. You can wear whatever style you want. You can wear whatever colour you want. If it makes you happy, you go and do it. And that's what I do. So I don't care that I'm wearing my Nana's old curtains in a top. I don't care. I like it. I'm wearing it. Liberating. It's a great word. Totally liberating. And I am just like... And it's funny, actually, because... I would have thought people would go, why are you wearing your Nana's old curtains? Or, you know, you get all of those criticism or negative comments. I haven't, I haven't got any. Even my son, Tom, right, he's 32. He says, oh, I like your top, Mum. I went, oh, yeah, I made it. And he knows I do my dressmaking. I said, I made it. These were um, great grandma, obviously, to him. Great grandma's old curtains. Instead of him going, oh, Mum, take that off. He went, really? Oh, Mum, it looks really good. You know, oh, nan uh, great grandma be proud of you. And you see, you do get the you do get the good comments. You don't get the. You, you, I think you think you tend to think you're going to get all the negative comments, or you're going to get people looking at you or making snide remarks. But you don't. Generally, you don't. And if you do, just ignore them, because you've got to do what you want to do. I'm telling you, just be yourself. I'll be a lot happier. I'm a lot happier. I'm in 54. It doesn't bother me one bit. I'm absolutely loving it. And it's like, I don't know, maybe it's just when you hit your 50s, I'm not sure. Is this, you, just, you do have like a change in attitude or a change of how you look on things. I've no idea. So because I can, and you know, where I am now, I can be true and I can do the things I want to do. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just a lovely feeling. By feeling this way as well, it's getting me through the heartache that knowing that my husband's got, got cancer. So... So, so it's, it's like, um, getting all emotional. So it is like, so it, so it's, it's making me stronger, I suppose, because it's an awful thing having that your husband, you know, has got cancer and you have to watch him day after day going through pain or struggling. And as a, and it just this is just really helping me so it doesn't it doesn't get me down probably as much as it probably would have done if I didn't feel so good about myself I, I, do you know what I mean I don't, I don't know whether I'm explaining myself very well take like the rough with the smooth and the highs with the lows and I just thank every day every day because you don't know what's around that corner and things do happen for a reason and like I say my life is totally different to how it was 15 years ago so on that note, hopefully I haven't made you, made you fall asleep. Um, I just wanted to share with you, so now I feel as if you know, you know me a little bit more and who I am sitting behind this camera for these videos. So yeah, so, so thank you so much for joining me today. And um, till the next time, please take care and happy sewing.